In video 4.6, we're going to talk a lot about polygons. There's a whole bunch of stuff you're going to learn about them. So off on the side here, let's put a concept box here. First of all, poly means many, gon loosely means side. So what a polygon is, is a many-sided figure, but it can't have any curves. So no curves all straight lines connected and um, can't cross over. So you can't have this going on, that's not a polygon, this isn't a polygon, but as many sides as you want, as long as they are straight and they don't overlap each other. So this is no, no, yes. Now, when we talk about polygons, there's a lot of stuff you're gonna have to do. First of all, we name them we're going to state whether they're concave or convex, regular or not. We're going to find the area. We're going to find the angle measures inside of it. Lots of stuff. So before we start answering these questions, first of all, let's write their names down. They have formal names up to about 12 sides. And then after that, um, I'll tell you what we do after that. So let's put the names over here. Three sides, you should know, triangle. Four sides we've talked about, quadrilateral. A five-sided polygon is called a pentagon. And again, you can use these on your test, so why not write them down, right? Six has that X in it, like hex, called a hexagon. Seven-sided is one people forget because it's a not a very common shape. Um, heptagon, sometimes I've seen it called a septagon, but heptagon is more formal. Eight, that one you should know, that's like the stop sign. It's an octagon. Nine-sided is called a nonagon. Ten-sided is called a decagon. Eleven-sided, you don't need to know. It does have a name, but you don't need to know it. And last, a twelve-sided is called a doe decagon. After that, 13, 14, 15, 21 sides. Some of them do get special names, but usually we just say if it has like 24 sides, we call it a 24 with the word gone after it. So, and we won't ask you that, so no need to worry about that. So then a couple other things. Let's go in our concept box here. We also can classify polygons as concave or convex. Concave caves in. Looks like somebody took a bite out of it. So it'll be all popped out like this, and then all of a sudden it's going to dent in, whoops, <laughs> as if somebody kicked it in and it caves in. So concave caves in. There's a more formal definition for it, but no need to go formal if informal will do, right? So convex is all popped out. So it doesn't cave in anywhere. It's all like somebody has pushed the sides out on it. So there's our concave caves in and our convex pops out. Next, regular. A regular polygon has all angles and sides congruent. So what that means is the equilateral triangle we call regular because all angles and all sides are congruent. So let's go over here and take a look at what we've got. First of all, we're going to name it based on how many sides it has or how many angles it has because they're this one and the same. But let's go count these up. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine sided is called a nonagon. So this is called a nonagon. Next, it's all popped out. Doesn't look like somebody kicked it in anywhere. So we're going to call it convex. 
Although the markings aren't there, by appearance, this appears to be regular. It looks like if this were three centimeters, so is this, so is this, so is this. And all these angles look like they're the same measure also. So by looks, we'd say it's regular. Technically, markings should be on there for you to definitively know that. But So we have a convex regular nonagon. Next up. We're going to do the same thing with the, these up here. So first thing I do is I count up the sides to give it its name. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine again. So it looks very different than the last one, but it's still an onagon. But this one looked like somebody kicked it in, did some damage in multiple places. So we'd call this one concave. And it certainly doesn't look like all the angles in the sides are congruent. So this one would not be regular. So though they have the same name as the one on the previous page, it's a very different looking polygon. Next one up, one, two, three, four, five sides. Five-sided is called a pentagon. It does not look like somebody gave it a kick and caved it in. So we would say it's convex. And the angles are obviously not the same. That's obtuse. This is clearly acute. So it would be not regular. So first off here, not a whole lot of math. We're just classifying things. It's a fairly basic concept. Next one up, count the sides to give it its name. One, two, three, four. So this is a quadrilateral. And that's the best we can call it, quadrilateral. That's the best I can call it. it. It's not a special kind of quadrilateral. It's certainly not a parallelogram or a rectangle or a rhombus or a kite or anything. It's just a regular old quadrilateral. Next up, it does look like somebody gave it a kick right there and it caved in. So it's concave. And... It's not regular, because regular ones have to be, although you might say, well, it looks kind of regular. I, I, when they cave in like this, you can't really talk about that angle measure. So in order to be regular, too, it, it also must be convex. So this is not regular. So that's how we name them and classify them and all that good stuff. So now we're going to talk about the angles in polygons. So again, let's put a little concept bite over here. I know on the previous sections I had the box in at the beginning. I forgot to do that on these. So you just make your own off to the side. And we're going to talk about the measures of the interior angles. All right. And in particular, when they're regular. So the, assume that these are regular, even though it's not marked. They look regular. So let's go over here and um, take something that you know. Remember that the angles... In a triangle, add up to 180. So remember that. All right? Now, don't draw this. Just watch. So remember when we were doing the equilateral triangle, and we said all these angles are the same, and they add up to 180. So if I did 180, divided by the number of sides or angles, I would get that each of these is 60 degrees. That, that process is going to be similar to how you figure out what these angles add up to and more specifically what each one is. So watch on here. When I connect this vertex to the two it doesn't touch, it makes one, two, three triangles. And we know that each triangle, the angles add up to 180 degrees. So that's 180. That's 180. And those add up to 180. So you'll notice I have three triangles. So the total number of degrees in here would be 3 times 100 and 80. That would tell me what this, 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 
and this add up to. But I want to know what's the measure of each one. So like here, I divided it by how many angles I had. And so for this one, I divide it by how many angles I have. So before I go put something in this concept byte, I want you to understand what I did on that. First of all, let's go do 3 times 180 divided by 5. You'll need a calculator for this section, so either bring one up um, on the internet or go ahead and ask me for one. I might have a couple. Otherwise, you don't want to do these by hand. The numbers get kind of big. So do 3 times 180 divided by 5, and I get 108 degrees. What that means is this is 108, this is 108, this is 108, this is 108, and this is 108. Well, what I want to do is say, can, can I come up with a formula for what I did here? Because on this one, I don't want to sit here and physically chop it into all these triangles and have it be this big long process but let's kind of take a look here I had a five-sided figure and it made three triangles when I have a four-sided figure it makes two triangles so four goes to two triangles five went to three triangles. Let's do a six-sided figure. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, boom. One, two, three, four. You'll notice that there's always two fewer triangles than the number of sides. So my formula for the sum of all the interior angles is that I do need to figure out how many triangles I have. I always have two fewer than the number of sides. So if we let n be the number of sides, you might want to write that on here. n equals number sides. Then I do n minus 2 times 180. That's what I did right here. 5 minus 2 times 180. That'll tell me how much they all add up to. But if I want to know what each interior is, I need to take that amount, the total, and I could have just showed you these formulas, but I like you to see where they come from. I think it, it helps. And I divide it by how many angles I have. So you can use these formulas, so make sure you write them down. You shouldn't come up to me and ask. All right, so let's go over here. It says find the measure of one interior angle. That would be this. So what I'm going to do is count up the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I have a dodecagon. Each interior angle is going to be n minus 2 times 180 degrees. What that means is those triangles I made, um, there were 10 of them. I'm not going to go draw them again. So I do n minus 2 times 180, and then I chop it up amongst my n angles. So let's go do that. On this one, n equals 12. So I'm going to do 12 minus 2, 10, times 180. That'll tell me what they all add up to. And then I'm going to divide it up amongst the 12 interior angles. So when you go to your calculator, you can just do 10 times 180 divided by 12 equals each one of those angles is 150 degrees. Let's go do the next one. All right. I'll point that angle. They're all 100. Notice the more sides it has, the more it starts to resemble a circle, and the bigger those angles get, the bigger and bigger they get. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. So first thing I do is I count out the sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I've got n equals 6. I go use that in my formula. To figure out what each interior is, I do n minus 2 times 180 degrees divide it up amongst the six angles. So you would go to your calculator, and you would do 4, 6 minus 2, times 180, divided by 6. 
and you'll get 120 degrees. So each interior angle on this one is 120 degrees. All right, now back up. Uh, actually, let's just make another concept box. Exterior are way easier than interior, and I'm just gonna tell you what that is. So for the exterior, the sum, let's write exterior on the top of this so that if you're asked that on your worksheet or on the test, you kind of know what box you're gonna look at. You should have on that one up there, write interior angles above that one as well, just to have a little bit more organization. The sum of the exterior angles is always 360. Uh, let's go draw an exterior angle so you can see what I mean. On this one, this is an exterior angle. You go like this, this is an exterior angle. When you go like that, this is, these are what we call the exterior angles. And if I were to cut them out, like if I were to um, go in with a pair of scissors and cut that out and then cut this out and then cut this out and piece them together like a puzzle, what happens is they, for the exteriors, they always make a circle in there. You could give it a try, but I know you won't. <laughs> I wouldn't either. Just trust me. They, add, they make a circle and they add up to 360. So if you want to know what each exterior is, because they're all the same and because you have N of them, you can just take the 360 and divide it by N. So it's kind of nice and easy. So when this one says find the measure of one exterior, I just, again, one, two, three, four, five sides. I find my N, write it inside of here, and then I do 360 divided up amongst the five angles. So let's go do that. 360 divided by five is 72. So each exterior is 72 degrees. Now, interestingly enough, let's go back up here because we did each interior on the Pentagon up here. And this should make sense to you because we found right on this problem right here that each interior was 108. We used our formula and we got each interior, each one inside is 108. Now I just said each exterior is 72. Well, let's go put those measures on here so you can see it. Each interior, let me erase my little dash here so I have room to write my angle. We found up above on the top that inside that's 108, and now we just found that outside that's 72. That should jive with what we've learned previously because I said that a linear pair, if they make a line together, they have to add up to 180, which these do. So everything kind of flows together in here. All right, so the next one. It's a kind of long video, but it's the last one. That's kind of nice. So we are still on this one finding, sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Let me fix this. Oh, having scrolling issues. There we go. We're still doing each exterior. So again, let's count the sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I have 360 degrees divided by 11 equals, and I'm not gonna do that on my calculator. All right, sum of interior. I purposely put these out of order. So now the sum of the exterior is 360. The sum of the interior on the previous page is N minus two times 180 degrees. Each interior, then I chop it up amongst the N angles here, but I wanna know what do all of these add up to? So again, I need N, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've got a nonagon here, n equals nine. The sum of the interior would be nine minus two, which is seven times 180 degrees. Seven times 180 gives me 1,260 degrees. That's what all the angles add up to. Again, if I wanted to know what each one was, then I'd chop that or divide this amongst the nine angles. But that's not what it asks, it just asks for some. And I think you get it, so we don't need to do this one. Now the area of regular polygons, let's go talk about that. Again, little concept box over on the side here. Put that on here. So first of all, let's put a hexagon on here. And let's make, pretend it's regular. I know my angles are a little off, but suppose that's regular. All angles and all sides are the same on this one. 
All right. So we've got these vertices. We've got sides. We've got angles. And now I'm going to give you a new thing. When you go to what we call the center and you go perpendicular to any of the sides, I can do it right there or I can do it right there or I can do it right here, right? This is called an apothem. An apothem. It's kind of a weird word. I'm going to erase my other two apothems on here. And when we're looking for the area of this, it's really all about this triangle. Okay? And you'll notice that if I could get the area of this one triangle, so I'm going to have you write this down, the area of that polygon is going to be the area of one triangle. Again, I like to write it with words instead of with formulas because you're not going to remember the formulas. The area of one of the triangles times however many you have. So for this hexagon, it has six angles, six sides, and there's six of those triangles in there that are all the same. So we do one triangle times the number of triangles, which is the same as the number of sides, which is the same as the number of angles. So all we really need to do is figure out, well, what's the area of one of the triangles? Well, let's go look. Area of a triangle is always 1 half the base, which on this one would be a side length, if you want to call it S or B for base. It really doesn't matter what you call it. I'm just going to say 1 half of the side times the height, which we call the apothem, but go ahead and call it height if you prefer. It's really one half base times height times however many you have. Well, let's go see. It's very, it's kind of nice and easy. So look here, this is, make my triangle. This is its height, five point, I just wrote over it, 5.1 is its height. And then the side length, although they gave it over here, it's regular. So all these sides are the same. So on this one, n is equal to 5, because I have 5 sides. The side length is 7.5. And the apothem, or the height of that triangle, is 5.1. So for me to get the area of that whole figure, here's what I do. I do 1 half, so I'm going to write area, equals 1 half the side length, 7.5 check, times the apothem, what's that, 5.1, check, times, this will give me one triangle, by the way, one half base times height, but I have five of them, so times five, and then you just go to your calculator and you crank that sucker out, you just do one half, or 0.5, whatever you like, times 7.5 times 5.1, right now if you hit enter, that'll give you the area of this one triangle over here. And we have five of them. So you have to hit times five. And you get 95.625-ish would be the area of this entire regular pentagon. We're only going to do one more here, I think, because it's, it's just a formula, so you should be fine. Let's go do this one right here. So I'm finding its area. I'm going to pull off the information that I need. I'm going to count the sides first so I know how many angles, how many sides, how many triangles are made. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so n is 6. What that means is there's 6 of these triangles. I need to know the side or the base of each triangle, and that's 10. doesn't matter that they gave it over here. This is still 10. I need to know the height of the triangle, which we call the apothem. And again, if you would rather call this B and this H, go ahead. I really don't care. Um, you wouldn't see that in a textbook. They call them A and S, but good enough for me. Um, the height of this is 5 root 3. I'm going to erase that so you can see it. And now I go right to my formula. My formula says that I do, for the area, I do 1 half of the side length times the height, or the apothem, this is 1 half base times height. That's the area of this one triangle. And I have six of them. So I go times six. It's really 1 half S-A-N. It's really what you're doing. Hey, my name's Sandy, so you can think of half Sandy. Um, 
Anyway, and then you go take this out on your calculator and you'd be done. I'm not going to go to my calculator because I'm running out of time. It says stop and do worksheet 464748. And I would like you to come up to me and ask me how much of that you really need to do. Have a good one. Done.